Welcome to the important dates portion of March's astrology and uh, we're just going to cover you know the dates here and for those of you who want to know more about how this translates into the everyday life with relationships and romance, career and money, the world at large, I'm going to have another video for that coming up next so that's another video for another time but for now let's get into these important dates and let me say we're in Pisces season right now as I'm filming this in late February so <laughs> yeah Pisces season is a wonderful magical enchanting time there's going to be a lot of really nice energy Piscean energy throughout the month of March but then also as we get closer to the end of the month of March we're getting into Aries season so yeah it's going to be the start of the new astrological year, right? Because our calendar starts in January, but if you look at the astrological calendar, it begins at the spring equinox, which is gonna be the 20th of March. So yeah, spring is when it all begins. And this is the month of new beginnings. So we are probably going to see new cycles having to do with relationships because Mars and Venus will be in Aquarius so relationships are going to have more of an independent, freedom-loving flair. There will overall be a feeling of getting forward movement in different areas of life because we will not have any retrogrades this month. It's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, last month in February, we had some light retrograde activity. And April, uh, very light at the end of the month on the 29th of April, we'll start getting into retrograde eclipse activity. So seize the moment in the month of March and almost into the end of April, I'd say a good month and a half here, really high time for you to seize the moment to launch something, embark upon something new. Some of you maybe travel, take a trip. It's going to be a great month to get some forward movement with your life, but it's also going to be with all the Piscean influence, very dreamy. And with that Piscean energy, and I would like to encourage us going beyond tapping into the dreaminess, but getting a little bit, you know, deeper into setting intentions, being really mindful, also getting more emotionally, spiritually attuned, living more from the heart and reflecting on living life at a higher level, reaching for higher ideals, very Piscean stuff. And remember, Jupiter's still in Pisces till May 10th. It's been there since December 28th of last year. So this is really fantastic for all the Pisces. By the way, I did a special birthday reading on my channel recently for all the Pisces. Uh, if you want to check it out, you, you can. <laughs> I have love readings for Pisces and I have, you know, the Pisces 2022 um, report. But I mean, speaking of Jupiter and Pisces, which we are still in during this Pisces season, holy crap, fantastic for all the Pisces out there and any Pisces placements that you have, right? I'm not Pisces, but I've got a Pisces stellium. So this is a really benefic energy bringing expansion, good luck, fortune. And it's also good regardless of whether or not you have Pisces placements. It's great for doing healing work, letting go, releasing emotional baggage, especially if this is healing work related to relationships and nurturing love in its truer, higher sense and expression. And probably the more that we open our hearts up during this time, the more likely we're gonna benefit from these energies, these very healing energies. Now, starting with March 2nd, we've got a new moon in Pisces, so very sensitive and loving energy. Again, new moons are about new beginnings, so this is a great time for getting some positive change in your life, definitely over the next two weeks, okay? Um, it is an important time of change for you and committing to change, and change in relationships might be the motivating factor here. Getting a new start, a fresh start. But there will be a bit of a seriousness to the tone because of Mercury and Saturn being closely aligned at this time. It is a great day to set intentions regarding what you can do to find more peace within yourself, despite chaos in the world at large, right? This is like finding peace despite the storm or calming the storm within. It's also going to be a good time for reflecting on what you need to release, heal, and find closure on. This might be a time when you're reflecting on themes of self-sacrifice. Maybe, you know, there was a time and a season for that and it's over. It's time to close the book on that and say, enough. I've given enough of myself to this. It's a new day. It's a new way. Let's, let's clean the slate. Let's move on. Or maybe you're reflecting on self-sabotage from the past and deciding, you know what? 
I'm no longer going to engage in that. For some of you, it might have to do with escaping reality, Neptuning out, and finally getting you know down to earth with some reality checks about you know what you want versus the way it actually is. Overall, generally speaking, great time, great day to do some shadow work on taking a new approach in your love nature, maybe with your love life or the way that you express your love in all kinds of relationships, not just romantic, but yes, definitely romantic. And it's a good time to reflect on bringing those dreams to reality with grounded manifestation. Some of you, though, again, maybe if you're doing the shadow work, you're having to look at how unrealistic ideals, fantasies have perhaps kept you stuck in life and a victim of your own longings that just are not realistic and figuring out, okay, how do I make this work in this reality? Those most affected will be the mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, and definitely pay attention to any placements that you have in those signs. On the same day of the second, Mercury will be conjunct Saturn in Aquarius, as I mentioned earlier. So this is a, an energy that will be beneficial if you're trying to set plans for the future or trying to come into agreement with others to get some forward movement with those plans. On the third, Mars and Venus will be conjunct Pluto in Capricorn. So another energy assisting with making decisions concerning relationships, money, career. Then on the fifth, the sun will be conjunct Jupiter in Aquarius. So really positive energy for bringing expansion and opening people up and boosting confidence with more optimism. This is great for planning and taking advantage of opportunities around the fifth. And then on the sixth, Mars and Venus will be in Aquarius. So here we go again with this. It's just another layer of energy that we saw from the second with that new moon in Pisces, where we're seeing new relationship cycles beginning. And, but these are relationships that are based on companionship, freedom, individuality, free expression. Mars and Aquarius is about taking action that is also more team oriented, more cooperative or deciding, you know what, let's tackle our problems more intelligently, more objectively. And remember, Mars has been in Capricorn since January 24th. So this has been giving us more of a career and money focus or drive over the last two months, roughly. So during this time, you know, there may have been some clashing with authorities, rules, restrictions. Well, we definitely saw that out in the media. If it didn't hit you close to home, it was out there in the world, wasn't it? <laughs> so this clashing with authorities, however it expressed itself in your life, may have caused us to set more practical plans as a result. Now, Mars is going to be in Aquarius until April 14th. So again, we're looking at the next month and a half as a very expansive time because Mars likes being in Aquarius. Mars is very fiery. Aquarius is very air. Air and fire do quite well together. Well, they're kind of explosive now, aren't they? <laughs> very passionate. So we could see a time of breakthroughs and opportunities coming maybe through social groups, communities, sharing of information, knowledge understanding, maybe coming together uh, on common goals. And then you add to that the Venus and Aquarius energy. Well, it's making people a lot more open to being experimental with relationships or experimenting with relationships, doing things that maybe in the past were not normal or conventional. People are being a lot more uh, free, more friendly, uh, maybe more fair towards others. I've been seen, by the way, you know, with a trucker convoy out in Canada, all of a sudden, people were doing some radically fringe, according to the media, things like boldly dancing, joining hands, hugging their fellow Canadians, people that are just strangers. And for the last two and a half years, we've been socially distancing. But, you know, this is more of a, a camaraderie and a, oh, to hell with the rules, you know, very Aquarian, like, I'm, I'm going to love humanity regardless, fearlessly, you know what I'm saying? It's a rebelling against the restrictions that we had. And so I think we're going to continue to see more of this as Venus is in Aquarius until April 5th, um, where, yeah, in terms of relationships, whether it's on, you know, the, the, the very personal level or on the collective level, people are going to be a lot more open to expressing themselves and more eager to connect with others socially, even if that means breaking current social norms like socially distancing. I think people are going to throw off those shackles. Definitely. 
Now, on the 9th, Mercury and Pisces is going to have us a lot more emotional, intuitive, and sensitive, particularly with our communications, our thoughts. It can also make us a lot more imaginative, more inclined towards fantasizing, having this dreamy nature, which it can be lovely, right? I, I mean, hey, I've been guilty of Neptuning out a time or million <laughs> in my life with my Pisces stellium. <laughs> it's my gift curse, actually. <laughs> so I will say, in all fairness, the downside of this energy is that there could be some difficulty in understanding or expressing, at least in a rational, logical sense. So, you know, positively, yeah, it makes us a lot more emotionally attuned. It does affect our thoughts and communications. Uh, it will have people making decisions more out of their emotions and intuition, which again has its pros and cons like anything. So I think we're going to be attracted to higher consciousness, but perhaps having trouble articulating those ideals. You might find yourself during this time in more solitude, needing to renew your energy, your spirit. And there might be this feeling, an inclination towards not wanting to be pinned down to anything like rigid routines or schedules. There's a wanting towards being more open-ended or less restricted. At least I think that's the vibe that a lot of people are going to be feeling this month. Or at least I should say while Mercury is in Pis Pisces. On the 10th, just to, as a very side note, we've got a crescent moon in Gemini, which is going to be seeking more information in moving on with plans that maybe were set around the second with that new moon in Pisces. On the 13th, the Sun conjunct Neptune adds even more heightened sensitivity and intuition, making people a lot more empathic and compassionate and having a greater sense of spiritual connection. It's really lovely energy, if you ask me. Then on the 18th, we've got this full moon in Virgo, which it's taking us back to the new moon on, that we had in Pisces, the opposite sign on the second. So perhaps you are now completing or culminating a project that you started around the second with that new moon. Perhaps you are now finding more balance between spirituality and the practicalities of life. And just be mindful the two to three days before and after this full moon in Virgo, because you're probably going to be feeling that energy, whether you're aware of it or not. It's going to be a good time for you to consider the plans that you made going back to September 6th of 2021 and look at how those plans have culminated up until this point or are causing you to now shift directions with what you want and putting effort into that. How has that evolved basically since September 6th of 2021? This is also going to be a good time to evaluate health, healing since that time. What have the last six months shown you about how you might be able to improve your health routine? This would bring a very positive turning point. I'm going to say over the last six months, I've been gaining even more information. Even yesterday, I randomly came across a video on YouTube about something, you know, a health issue that I've been trying to figure out for the longest, and it just randomly popped up in my feed. I clicked on it. I'm like, holy crap, I'm going to try that out, and I might finally get a, you know, some kind of resolve with this. So be aware because it's something about health issues coming up with that full moon in Virgo on the 18th and something about the last six months finally coming to fullness, a full fuller awareness or a releasing of, a finalizing of something having to do with health, health routines. But there's also this element as well having to do with relationships and romance during this time and you coming into an emotional time in your life based on a promise or a fulfillment that was again initiated around the time of the full moon on the second of this month. However it's playing out, it seems that there's this theme of finding balance between your physical and spiritual health, finding order in the midst of disorder, discerning the difference between the mundane and the ethereal, right? What's grounded and what's ideal, <laughs> uh, what's practical, what's impractical, looking at the differences between work and service, criticism and acceptance. These kind of dichotomies are what we are working through collectively during this time. And from the two weeks that follow this full moon, that is revealing how we're going to be expressing the emotions realized from this full moon. But beware, it might not be so rational. Okay, uh, the full moon is aspecting Pluto positively during this time. So, you know, that's aiding with positive transformative change 
aimed towards improving ourselves at some level. So overall, it seems positive, but again, uh, might not be so clear to the eyes around the 18th what this is or what to do with it. Those most affected will probably be the um, mutable signs, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, but most significantly impacted are going to be the cardinal signs, Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn. Now on the 20th, we've got the sun in Aries all the way to April 19th. Woohoo! I love it. <laughs> you know, I'm, I am an Aries season person. I, I love the spring. It's my favorite time of the, the year. Um, and yes, it is the start of the new astrological year. That is the day of the spring equinox where, you know, the northern hemisphere goes into spring. The southern hemisphere goes into fall. So yeah, here in America, you know, the... The birds are chirping, the bees are buzzing, the flowers are blooming. I just love it, love it, love it. And yeah, some would say love is in the air, you know, um, especially with all this energy, okay? It's a, it's a very um, life-giving, life-thriving time, energetically. And the positive about this energy is, yes, it's spontaneous. Some would say this Aries energy is very uncomplicated. It's very driven, brave, direct, initiative. The downside is that it can be impulsive, naive, short-sighted. There might be a lack of planning. I don't know, though. I think that the two weeks leading up to this sun in, in Aries, you're going to have plenty of time to think and reflect and plan, given the aforementioned energies. I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> and then on the 23rd, we've got Mercury conjunct Jupiter in Aquarius. Very lovely energy for helping to think clearly and plan effectively, right? Because this is bringing expansion with Jupiter to data, to information, which is definitely Mercury and Aquarius, right? This is having the ability to see the bigger picture and to communicate a lot more clearly and sharply. It's good also for learning, understanding, getting your point across effectively. And then on the 25th, we've got a waning moon in Capricorn. So this is going to be a great time to reconsider any projects you've started this month, maybe reflect on the action and choices that you need to take to move these projects along further. Are there any additional commitments or responsibilities that need to be fulfilled to get things going further? And then on the 27th, we've got Mercury and Aries. So this is a very assertive, direct way of communicating, very fast moving communications and could have people kickstarting new activities, ideas, projects. Yes, I mean, on the positive, you could get decisions made very quickly. On the downside, um, might be a little rash, okay, because maybe people didn't think it through. Hopefully, you've been using the light retrograde energies and, you know, the energies in Aquarius and Pisces, though, leading up to this to do all the thinking that you need to do it's it's time to go mode now there will be a lot of independent thinking you know everybody's gonna maybe have their own ideas um but the beauty of this is that given the other energies there's more of an openness to accepting uh, others having differences of opinion mercury and aries is also an energy that prefers learning through experience rather than through instruction so again, this is people who are like, well, we'll figure it out as we go along. The downside is that there can be some impatience or people feeling hurried into making decisions. Sometimes this can bring about strife in communications or at least some assertive debating, some fierce debating. Uh, some people may be given towards defensiveness or combative speech. And so we've got to be on the lookout for that. But overall, I'm feeling really good about the energies supporting us getting forward movement this month. Even going into April, we're looking at having a lot more carryover of things moving forward. And of course, when we get into April, I'll talk about April's astrology then. But in the meantime, if you want to know more about how these energies are possibly going to translate into relationships and romance, career and money, the world at large, then make sure that you subscribe and you hit the bell for notification to stay tuned for more videos because I'm definitely releasing another one on this very subject. Till next time, be blessed.